If you love liberty, declare your independence by signing the Shire Society Declaration at ShireSociety.com. And again, don't forget the silent auction. Uh, the aforementioned John McAfee uh, campaign has donated a necktie with the wonderful face of John McAfee. Uh, there's also a uh, mosaic. If you look from here, you can see the larger picture. It's a picture of Dr. the late Dr. Mark Allen Feldman. Uh, mosaic is a lot of the photos that Judd Weiss took from the LP National Convention that were put together into a mosaic that's an 18 by 24. Uh, again, a lot of things uh, go bid on them. The bidding ends at 5.30, winners get announced at 5.45. Uh, we'll now move to the report from the chair. After that, we have the treasurer's report and the membership report. And during the membership report, uh, Brian, if you're listening, make sure you get that delegate count, which I think is what you're doing right now. Uh, so, the chair report over the last six months, uh, myself and the rest of the executive committee, we've made great strides in the party. This is, from what I've been told, the largest convention since 2008. Uh, we also, again, for the first time in nearly two decades, have a libertarian state rep serving the majority of his term as a libertarian. Uh, and again, we'll get the full membership report from Brian McQuaid, who's chair of the membership committee. Uh, and I just want to say that he's done an amazingly wonderful job getting new members and getting membership renewals and has gone out of his way to ensure that the membership roles that we do have are as accurate as possible. Jaletta Jarvis, our secretary, and I recently met with some Russian politicians, thanks to the World Affairs Council at Southern New Hampshire University. Uh, the Russians were very interested in the plight of minor parties in the United States, uh, because that's not something that they necessarily have to deal with. Uh, we, Caleb already mentioned about some of the candidates. Uh, we've already recruited a candidate for governor, at least three candidates for U.S. Congress, at least three candidates thus far for state Senate, and I believe 14 or 15 candidates for state rep, uh, probably going to have several more as well as hopefully some candidates for county level offices. Uh, we were at the New Hampshire Liberty Forum this year, and I was invited to speak at that event as the chair of the party uh, during the weekend event, we signed up four new members, sold five convention tickets, and for the first time in many years, the executive committee is holding regular meetings and posting those minutes on the newly designed LPNH website that Brian Chabot put a good bit of work into doing. Uh, we've pushed forward supporting party principles over individual interest, and this has paid off in a big way. We, as a team, have done this in six months. Uh, storm filled, a storm-filled winter. Uh, just imagine what the five of us combined could do over the next year. We're already working on plans to set up tables at county fairs, at the Concord Market Days, and have more representation at state and local events, and hopefully a bigger, better convention next year with workshops and more activities. Again, I want to stress that this has been a team effort, and I'd like you to give a round of applause to everybody on the executive committee. <laughs> Tom Kershaw, do you have a treasurer's report? It will be brief, but yes. This is the best kind of The man with the money. I'd just like to know, how come when our people meet with the Russians, it's not a major story? <laughs> I, I will, like I say, we'll keep the Treasury Report very brief. Um, given membership drives, the other work, we're, we're in a position now, cash-wise, while a pittance compared to major parties is still stronger and bigger than we've been in quite some time. Um, our efforts to be able to expand and utilize things like PayPal and Bitcoin accounts have definitely been... Um, appreciated and taken on um, as a helpful addition to be able to do things. Uh, I will also mention, he mentioned the raffles. Uh, we do have merch. We do have some really nice new lapel pins. 
We've got some new updated bumper stickers and we've got some t-shirts. So uh, please make sure you check those things out and we will have those available for sale throughout the day. Um, just real quick, our basic uh, bank balance totals right now stands at $6,879. Uh, we will have some, you know, fair expenses coming out of the convention to pay off at the end of the day, so we'll be reducing that balance. Um, but again, with membership drives, renewals, things like that, we're holding steady and strong. And some of the expenses that were preliminary to this event have already been managed, and we won't have those as necessarily a recurring thing. So we'll keep that at that position for now. We'll have some updates um, in our next executive board meeting with the uh, the postmortem on the expenses. So if anyone other than that have a question about treasure issues, I will close that. Oh, so I got to walk all the way over there. Yeah, <laughs> please walk all the way over there. <laughs> have you seen any like surge in donations or interest since the 2016 campaign? Yes, definitely. I, I think there's certainly, um, beyond just the membership mm -hmm. and the renewals, we definitely have seen ticks in the PayPal notes as just straight up donations. So that's been a, ah. that's been a plus. Awesome. Very good. We will close this treasurer's report. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tom. And Brian McQuay, uh, you have a membership report and a uh, credentialing report. Hello, everyone. Um, so the membership report. Um, first, I wanted to put in here, uh, this, we just got this the other day from LP National. Uh, we have 186 bylaw sustaining members with LPNA, or with LP National that are from New Hampshire. We're gonna try and get more of those memberships with LPNH as well. We currently have 101 LPNH members uh, at our last convention in September, we had 62 members. That's a gain of 39 members, a 63% increase. Um, while, while I'm recognizing uh, membership, I do want to recognize Daryl, John, and Rosalie Babiars, and Victoria Saucier. They're lifetime members, and I just wanted to personally uh, thank them for their contributions. Here, here. So uh, I want to start, if, uh, if re-elected as uh, membership chair, I want to start working on getting members from some of our uh, northern counties. We don't have a lot of members there. Uh, we've got Belknap with only one, Carroll with three, Cheshire with six. We have no members in Coas County. I plan to change that. Uh, four in Grafton, 38 in Hillsborough, nine in Merrimack, 16 in Rockingham, 14 in Stratford, one in Sullivan, sorry. 17 in Rockingham, 14 in Stratford, one in Sullivan, and then we have eight out-of-state members as well. And uh, as far as credentialing, uh, we currently have 34 delegates. Uh, Mo, has anyone else showed, have any other delegates showed up, Mo? Okay, 34 delegates. Um, so we need 30 for a seven-eighths vote, 26 for a three-quarters vote, and 23 for a two-thirds vote. So, and that's my report. Thanks. Thank you, and uh, the agenda, just want to remind everyone, the agenda was amended at the beginning so that officer elections are happening now, and after officer elections, we will go to consideration of amendments to the Constitution and the bylaws. I will open nominations for chair, and the chair recognizes Gillette Jarvis. Um, I have a little prepared thing, I'm sorry. The person that I would like to nominate is someone that, honestly, I do not always see eye to eye with. As a matter of fact, when I first saw this person speak, my thoughts were, oh my God, this man is crazy. <laughs> um, I thought that, honestly, there was no way that I would ever get along with this person. He was radical in your face, and he seemed like a do-it-my-way-or-no-way type libertarian anarchist. But, honestly, I confused passion with craziness. <laughs> uh, when we actually did meet, I found out that he was a very down-to-earth, normal man. 
We have had our disagreements, but when we did, he was always very respectful of my opinions and acknowledged them. He was always ready to change his statement if I provided facts. Of course, his first attempt was always to see if the new facts backed up his previous statement in a different way. But that is something that I can respect. Because just because new facts are presented does not mean that you are wrong. But he has always admitted when he was wrong. Always. I actually found myself enjoying the debates that we had over every issue because of this. He isn't a person to say, I am right and you are wrong. He tries instead to convince you and show you that you actually agree with him. <laughs> and this is something that I find very handy when trying to convince people that they actually want to be a libertarian. But these one-on-one -on -one discussions are not why I want to nominate him. I have watched him stand in front of a group of people and talk about this party. From the Russian diplomatic delegation that came to speak to us about libertarianism, to the speech that he gave at the State House in support of Caleb Dyer's transition to the best party in New Hampshire. He argues for people and their freedoms that don't even know him at the State House every single week. Each time I have watched him, he has had the opportunity to talk about himself. He could have talked about how he was one of the Libertarian nominees for president and the number of votes he had for that office. He could have mentioned that he is an award-winning writer. He could have mentioned how he started a lobby to support people that uh, don't know him and that he fights for their freedom, but he never does. Every time I have seen him speak in front of a group of people, he talks about the party and lets this party be his focus on what we can do for New Hampshire, not what he can do. I have heard him talk on talk show, on the talk show that he co-hosts every night. And when credit is given out for what is going on in New Hampshire and in this party, he does not say thank you and move on. He names names of people in this party who have worked very hard and, uh, and those people who have worked to bring out the increase in membership, to push for the betterment of this party, to push for the activeness in this party. As chair, he could have accepted the credit, but he has not. Some say that he is not a moderate, and that goes against him and this party. I say this does not matter, because he follows the letter of our Constitution, bylaws, and platform. If you want to change them, that's up to you. That's up to the membership, and he will defend your right to make that change as long as you don't change this party to the Republican or Democrat, because really, what's <laughs> the point of that? <laughs> so the question is, who do you want to represent this party? I want someone who believes in us, believes in me as an individual, and supports me as a libertarian. I want someone who puts the party first in every single situation. So this is why I am nominating Daryl W. Perry as chair of the Libertarian Party of New Hampshire to once again continue to lead us into liberty. The motion has been made and seconded. I accept. Are there further <laughs> nominations for the office of chair? Motion. Chair recognizes Bo again. Didn't prepare anything. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it would be my great honor to nominate a man who gave me the ability to march down to Manchester City Hall and register as a libertarian for the first time in 25 plus years. So I would like to nominate Max Abramson as chair. Second. Yes, I accept. Are there further nominations? for the Office of Chair. Seeing none, nominations are closed. Uh, Gilletta appears to be passing out the ballots right now. Did we have the opportunity to hear from each candidate for the vote? Yeah, that would be... So there's been a motion to allow candidate statements. Do you have a time for time limit for statements? Two minutes each. Two minutes each? It's been moved and seconded. Any objection to allowing candidate statements? Max, would you like to give your statement first? Do you want me to come to the podium? 
Uh, there's the microphone. To the podium. To the podium. Or, you know what? Come up to the podium. Come up. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. My name is Max Abramson. I'm the formerly the only, last year, the only libertarian serving in the State House. I want to thank uh, Caleb Dyer for, uh, for uh, joining us, and I'd like to thank Representative Lachance, who has also uh, changed parties to join uh, the good guys. We're the cool party. Uh, I have been proposing for a few years now something called Blue Ocean Strategy. I've looked at other successful classical liberal parties in other Western countries. Every other Western country has a successful Libertarian Party that gets at least a few people elected. And if you look at the handout that I put together, you can see that it's not just it's not just a few people. They've elected large numbers of MPs and members to their various legislatures and city councils. And they're very effective. And the reason that they're very effective is because they really focus on uh, urban areas and college towns. When I looked at the results, I won over 31,000 votes last year. And I want to thank every single one of you who helped hold signs, put on bumper stickers, and, and, and Finally, ballot access. We finally managed to get over four percent of the vote in a statewide race, and I can tell you it was very, very difficult. But I only spent eight hundred dollars doing so. So there's a lot of potential out there, and we found that in places like Manchester and Nashville, where the Republicans and where Sununu did the worst, is actually where we did the best. And I would like to focus as much of our energy as possible on people who have run before, and I'd also like to focus as much of our energy as possible on reaching out to non-traditional voters, people who rarely vote people who, are, who feel disenfranchised and not represented by the two parties, and I'd like to really focus on college towns and urban areas and among younger voters where we've done the best. Um, we've succeeded just by talking about the issues, getting into debates, um, and taking on Democrats and rhinos one-on-one. -on -one. Of course, we take on rhinos a lot in small-town America, but I think we also need to take on the Democrats equally. And what we've seen historically is uh, the other classical liberal parties around the world have gotten the largest numbers of people elected by focusing there. And I also believe that we need to back our candidates. Everyone who runs as a libertarian needs to get the full support of the party, including financial support. Thank you very much. I will be incredibly brief. Uh, I want to thank Gilletta for giving a wonderful nominating speech. I had absolutely no clue that was happening. Uh, and I just want to reiterate what we as a team have been able to do in six months and ask that you wind up reelecting us as a team for the next 12 months. And uh, I will hand the gavel over to Roger Paxton to officially uh, preside over this vote. Has anybody not had a chance to fill out their ballots? Well, I put the names in. Spelling. Gilletta, who's actually picking up the... Uh, Patrick, Patrick said that he would. Can you just go ahead and turn in your ballots to Patrick as he comes by. If we could get maybe somebody else to kind of. I was going to say, help. I can help pick up. I just can't yeah, count. We can, I don't know. <clears throat> we can have like one person from the table collect ballots. Ask Heather if she'll help count. Heather, can you help count, Tom? Tom. And Derek. Thank you. Heather, are you helping to count? Yes, sir. Can you do them too? Oh. Let's go here now, can we move forward with the next? We're all named. We're all the names collected. Jalena, can we go ahead and pass out the vice chair ballots while we're counting, just to kind of speed up some time? While we're waiting, uh, don't forget we do have the silent auction that you can check out anytime before 5.30. Also the 50-50 uh, Philly, uh, for the 50, 50 raffle. Uh, you get to keep half of that money if you win, and the other half, of course, goes to the party. The, the red tickets are for the 50-50 raffle. Take the half. red tickets are for the 
for the 50-50 raffle. You take your half of the ticket, put the other half in the bucket. In the jar. Or bowl, jar, whatever it is. Board of information? Yes, Chair sure, right. Uh In reading the bylaws, uh, Article 1, Section 3, it seems to apply there should be two vice chairs. That was changed last yeah. Well, you are correct. Um, there has not been two vice chairs in quite some time. Um, if I guess if we want to have a nomination for a second one, uh, however, we are we do have a plan proposal to change that to only one. Um, if that passes, then the person I guess goes away. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, that, that's one of the conflicts that currently exists between the Constitution that says one vice chair and the bylaws. And I had previously been told that the bylaw had been amended, but the copy of the bylaws that I have has not been amended, so there is a proposal to wind up getting those to sync together. There had been two based on the congressional <coughs> districts. Yeah, what that, 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 would, was. that would sort of make sense. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if it's... I'm not sure if it's 10 years, but it's it's quite some time that I, yeah. Yes, there's also a coffee bar over here. If you would like some coffee, is there water as well, Jaletta? Um, what's over there? Just coffee. Just coffee. It looks like. <laughs> Please help yourselves. We have the results of the vote. The vote is 22 for Daryl W. Terry and 13 for Max Abramson. I will now open the floor for nominations for vice chair. Uh, yes, please go to a microphone. Chair recognizes Caleb Dyer, the Honorable Caleb Dyer. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to nominate Roger Paxton for Second. Vice Chair of the Second. Chair Party of Second. It's been moved and seconded. Roger, do you accept, accept. the nomination? Uh, Roger says that he accepts, but he also had a point of information. We had <clears throat> we had 45 votes in this last uh, election. There should have only been 44. 35. 34. 35. What? It should have been 34. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, my mistake. I miscounted. But anyway, we had one extra vote. Uh, it did make a difference in this election. However, if you look at your tag. Yeah. Yellow. yellow. If you have a yellow tag, you're eligible to vote. If you have a white tag, you are not. So please make sure that uh, if you're not eligible to vote, that you're not voting. Thank you. Election fraud. Did somebody drive a bus with Massachusetts plates? <laughs> oh my God. So there's been a nomination for Roger Paxton that's been seconded. Are there further nominations for the office of vice chair? No. Are you walking towards the microphone? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> nominations for vice chair are closed with only one nomination. Uh, seeing as how there's only one person nominated for vice chair, shall we forego the paper ballot and do all in favor of Roger say aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> I heard one opposed. It still passed on voice vote. Congratulations, Roger, on your reelection. Uh, next, we will do uh, secretary. Nominations for secretary will now be entertained. I nominate Jaletta Jarvis. 
Second. <laughs> Gilletta Jarvis has been nominated and seconded. Are there further nominations for secretary? I'd also like to thank Gilletta for an amazing job for this convention. <laughs> Well, we do have this being like filmed, so anything that's not being picked up by a microphone might not be picked up on the recorder. Uh, could you restate your Is this statement? One? Is this one? I just want to thank Gillette Jarvis for an amazing job with this convention. Woo! Yeah! Here I recognize is Jessica Paxton. Thank you. Just really quickly, just for expediency, sake, can we use the ballot that we have in hand that says vice chair to vote for secretary to avoid taking these back and passing new ones? If we require a paper ballot, then yes, that would be appropriate. Okay. Are there further nominations for the Office of Secretary? Seeing nine nominations are closed. All in favor of Gilletta Jarvis as Secretary say aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> Hearing nine, Gilletta, congratulations. I, said no. <laughs> I will now entertain motion or nominations for the office of treasurer. I nominate Tom Kershaw. Second. Yeah, second. Tom Kershaw has been nominated <laughs> and seconded. Are there further nominations for the office of treasurer? Any opposition? I see nominate myself. No. Yes, Tom's in the room. Uh, Tom, do you accept the nomination? I just don't think I got an I accept. No. I will accept the nomination. Tom Kershaw accepts the nomination. Accept Any that. further nominations for treasurer? <clears throat> Seeing none. All in favor of Tom Kershaw being reelected as treasurer say aye. 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 All opposed? Congratulations, Tom. Thank you. The Office of Membership, uh, Chair of the Membership Committee, uh, motions for nominations. I'd like to nominate Brian McQuaid, and it's not just because he's been doing the job for the last six months, but it's because he's been doing a damn good job the last six months. He took what was given to us, which was essentially a mess of a membership directory, and turned it into something that we actually can believe is very accurate. And it could have been done without countless hours of work that he put in. So I just wanted to nominate Brian McQuaid. Second. Uh, yep. Second. Seconded by several people. Brian, are you willing to accept? I do. Thank you. Further nominations for chairman of the membership committee. Seeing none, nominations are closed. All in favor of Brian McQuaid being the chair of the membership committee, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, congratulations. We will now open uh, nominations for chair of the judicial committee. What is that? Um, yeah, what? I nominate John W. <laughs> uh, there's a question of point, point what of is the judicial yeah. committee, and then there's a point of information. Yeah, but uh, point of information, what is the job description or the you know, description of the judiciary committee. The judicial committee would oversee if there are disputes uh, to where, let's say, the executive committee passes a resolution or does an action and someone believes that that has either violated the Constitution, the bylaws, or the platform, then they could appeal that decision to the judicial committee. If there's a dispute about something that happens at this convention, that decision uh, would be appealed to the Judicial Committee for review. So John Babiars has been nominated for Chair of the Judicial Committee and seconded. Do you accept? I accept. John accepts the nomination. Are there further nominations for Chair of the Judicial Committee? Seeing none, I will close nominations for chair of the Judicial Committee. All in favor of John Baviars being the chair of the Judicial Committee, say aye. 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 All opposed? 
hearing none. Congratulations, John. Yeah. And give me one moment to uh, check with the Constitution and the bylaws. I believe we technically elect the remaining members of those committees. Uh, I just need to verify. Yes, in accordance with Bylaw 7, Section 2, a convention may elect standing committee chairs and members. Uh, the chairs of the two standing committees have been elected. Uh, nominations for being a member of the membership committee. I nominate Brian Shields. Second. I've got a couple nominations, actually. <laughs> Go ahead and make all of them, please. Uh, and Emily, uh, Brian Shields, Robert Lombardo, though he's not in attendance, um, and uh, Linda Keene as well as event coordinator. Which, from my reading, appears to fall under the membership committee. Did someone call no. for clarification? Yeah, yeah. No, please use the microphone. Yeah. Well, okay. Do I have the motion? <laughs> Come on. What is this? Just, go st just stay by the mic. Yeah, just stay by the microphone. <laughs> All right. Just because we want the audio picked up by the camera. Um, point of clarification or point of order for um, the, what was it again? Sorry. The membership committee. Yeah, the membership committee and the event coordinator, whether or not that comes into the purview of. Uh, where are you finding the uh, reference to event coordinator? It's, it was in the uh, it was in the Constitution, I believe, and I don't have my uh, I don't have a program. So. Uh, again, to answer the question about the election of the members of the committee, that would be in accordance with Bylaw Seven, Section Two, that says convention may elect standing committee chairs and members. Uh, and I had, do not recall having heard the uh, event coordinator title. Uh, That's not a. Yeah, and I, I'm hearing from at least uh, two of the people on the committee that uh, that is not something that is elected as its own position. Uh, so we have nominations for Brian Shields, Robert Lombardo, and Linda Keen uh, for membership committee. Two of those three individuals are here. Uh, Brian and Linda, are you willing to accept? Yes. Yes. I have a quick question. Is there a, a limit or a, a number of committee members, and should we be voting for them individually or as a slate? Uh, to the best of my knowledge, there is not a limit per se, but traditionally it's been either three or five members of the committees. There's no limit. But the uh, governing documents do not specify a limit. Uh, so the number three or five is just what I remember the committee having been. Thank you. Uh, regarding the question of should we be electing uh, these people together or individually, uh, that would be up to this body to decide how they want to do that. I make a motion that we uh, vote for them as a slate. Second. Yeah. yeah second. Got a motion to vote for them as a slate. Uh, and again, we have three people that have been nominated and seconded. Two of them we know are willing to accept. And I believe uh, Robert would be interested. Right. I, I was about to say if uh, Robert has uh, does not accept, he would not be on the committee, and the chair recognizes no time. Uh, I motion to nominate uh, Sean Nikowski for the membership committee. Second. Is Sean here? Yes. <laughs> Are you willing to? Yes. So we have four, so that would wind up putting the committee to five members. Yep. Uh, are there further nominations? Hearing none, nominations are closed. All in favor of electing the slate of Brian Shields, Robert Lombardo, Linda Keene, and Sean Machowski to the membership committee, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, congratulations. And the Judicial Committee has traditionally had three members. Uh, we have elected the chair or their nominations for 
Judicial Committee. Do we have someone walking to a microphone? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'd like to nominate uh, Caleb Dyer. Caleb, are you willing to accept? Accepted. Yep. Second. Second. So. Caleb has been nominated and seconded for Judicial Committee. Do we have further nomination for Judicial Committee? You can all walk over there, all call one at a time. Chair recognizes Rich Tomaso. I nominate, can you hear me? Yep. Uh, I nominate uh, Rosalie Babiars and Max Abramson for the Judicial Committee. Rosalie Babiars has been nominated. Are you willing to accept? Max Abramson, are you willing to accept? No. Um, would the chair recognize a point of historical information about the Judicial Committee? Yes. Um, as uh, <clears throat> as, he was, the chair previously said, this is a this is a an or, uh, committee that serves. It's essentially our our appellate body. It's for it's for disputes about, um, you know, activities of members or of the executive committee when they're in conflict with our principles and particularly with our constitution and bylaws. Um, it has traditionally been uh, filled by members of long-standing um, and proven commitment to the party and our principles. Um, so um, if you're thinking of people to nominate um, for, for this committee, um, that's sort of what traditionally we have been thinking about. I know it's not 100% spelled out in the bylaws, um, and for the record, I think this body has met two or three times in the last 40 years. Um, so it is a busy, busy committee for those of you with tight schedules. Uh, you can um, Chair recognizes Caleb Dyer. I would like to nominate Chip Spangler for the Judicial Committee. Second. Chip Spangler has been nominated and seconded. Do you accept? Yes. Are there further nominations? Oh, you got it. Yes. Uh, I'd like to nominate Brian Chabot. Second. Brian, Except. are you willing to accept? Yep. Brian Chabot has been nominated and seconded. Are there further nominations? Seeing none, we have four people nominated for two positions. Uh, Madam Secretary, uh, would it be prudent to have people write two names on the current ballot that they have passed out? The yes. vice chair ballot. Yeah. Be the vice chair ballot that you currently have. So if you are a delegate, you should have a uh, ballot in front of you that says vice chair. Please write two of the four names. Caleb Dyer, Rosalie Babiars, Chip Spangler, Brian Chabot. And Madam Secretary, can we get those names yes. popped up on the screen so that people know how to spell them? Uh, <laughs> what was that? I'm lacking ballot. Lacking ballot. We have another one. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> right. I am trying to get the names up right now. Point of information. Chair recognizes Dan Fishman. Uh, perhaps the people, when they collect the ballots, could validate the tags just to make sure that we don't have accidentally collected the people who can't vote. Thank you. If, if everybody's handed in, why am I doing this? Most of these are familiar names. <laughs> If you've not yet filled out your ballot, the names with the proper spelling are up on the board. Did I spell right now? Patrick McKnight and Heather Wolf. Heather, the fine. What? Are you collecting? Yeah, Heather, are you assisting in the counting again? Oh. I'm trying to get there. Sure. Only two? Brian has some um, ballot. 
Committee has never been so hotly contested. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> I the last convention we had, we said, who was on the JC? Are they still members? Yeah. I think so. Let's re-elect them. <laughs> it might be moderately important this time around. So that's, that's probably... Like, who knows? He could get called right now. <laughs> yeah, I know. I needed it. We should. Yeah. 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 Uh, point of order, is there actually a limit to the number of people on the judicial committee? I'm not seeing one. There is? Uh, there is not a limit. Uh, again, the figure that I came up with was what has been used historically. But that's not. It's Which not in the Constitution three. or bylaws. No, it's so. not specified in the Constitution or the bylaws. So, so could we, by simple majority, yeah, accept a one. slate of more people to serve on the Judicial yeah. Committee? Yeah. Uh, I'm being oh, told. Uh, yeah. uh, yes, <laughs> the votes are currently being cast <laughs> right. uh, and <laughs> counted. So there's no way anybody can lose. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's no way. <laughs> exactly. I, I would entertain such a motion if one were to be made. That would need to be, I believe, adopted by a two-thirds majority. I'm, I would move that we accept the full slate of, of four committee members in addition to the chair uh, to serve on the committee. Yes. A second. There's been a motion and a second to have five members total serving on the Judicial Committee. Would anyone like to speak against the motion? I would, um, primarily because we've already voted, um, and I, I fully sympathize with my fellow members' desire to, you know, nominate as a slate, but um, we've had 45-ish years of history of a three-member judiciary committee, and we have already voted, so um, I just think changing the rules in the middle of a vote is just yeah. a really bad precedent, even if, even if we like all these people and they're all great. Um, I just my my parliamentary hat is uh, really doesn't yeah. like this idea, so I yeah. would I would vote against uh, this motion. Chair recognizes Dan Fishman. I would just say that the status quo, as it is, based on what's written in the Constitution, with no hard limit, means that the people who are currently being voted upon will win; they cannot lose. And therefore, if the desired result is a judicial committee, people can uh, don't have to vote for this. They can vote oppose it, the amendment can be withdrawn, and we will get a judicial committee of five members with the chair and four people on the board. Yeah. I, <clears throat> can we get an input from That's the further judicial speaker? committee? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That is the right person to ask. Well, no, actually, parliamentary would be legal. So. Um, well, no, because um, since we were voting for two out of four, it's entirely possible that members who do not get a majority support from this convention. So, yeah. again, the chair of the committee can pot, I believe the chair of the committee can populate the committee. Correct. So, if it comes a time where the committee needs to meet and the chairman of the committee feels he needs more advisement, he can ask additional members to sit on the committee. Um, this convention does not have to populate the committee at all. The chair, the chair of the committee can submit nominations to the board. So, um, I, don't want to take a lot of time on this. Uh, but again, for a committee that 99% likely think will never meet, um, I think we're I think we're fine as we are. Um, and in the future, if we want to address this more fully, uh, uh, an amendment to to the party documents would be the way to do it. Chair Wright recognizes Sean Michalski. Thank you. Um, yeah, I just wanted to follow up and say it, it just appears that the convention may elect standing committees and, and members. Um, I thought that that is fully consistent with the, the group as a whole yeah. electing the full committee and, and leaving less discretion to the to the chair to correct so the the fill. question that's really before us now is how many members should be on the committee right. not whether or not we should elect members of the committee right uh, the ruling of the chair was since historically we have had three members on that committee that okay. that's what we would adopt uh, there was a motion to have a five-member committee has been spoken to and spoken against. Uh, the question has been called. 
Uh, it is my understanding that it would need a two-thirds majority to pass. Show of hands. Show of hands. All in favor of a five-member judicial committee, raise your hand. Six. The chair sees 23 hands. That's exactly what we need for two thirds is 23. <laughs> wow, you want that. <laughs> <laughs> well, the motion does. Wait, hold on. So 23 means it passes. The motion passes. Uh, vote counters, uh, okay. you can stop counting <laughs> unless you just want to give us a number for the sake of us having a number. No, we're going to be here a while. <laughs> no, you we just won't. made you irrelevant. <laughs> yeah, we, we just made you irrelevant on this. Uh, so we have a five-member committee now. Okay. All right. Congratulations. All right. Congratulations, Caleb, Rosalie, Chris, and Brian. Point of order. Point of order. So I'll, I'll still turn these in just so they have to. Um, you didn't actually vote on that slate. Mm. You just increase the number. Mm. So oh, that's like, right. Oh, <laughs> shit. Oh, man. Correct. Oh, no. Call for voice vote? Yeah. Voice vote on the slate of Caleb Dyer, Rosalie Babiars, Chip Spangler, and Brian Chabot being the members of. And before we have the vote, Chair recognizes Rich Tamal. Cannot change the rules of a vote in the middle of a vote. Yeah. Parliamentary is in 101. We have, I seriously think what we just did was blatantly a violation of our, of Robert's Rules of Order. And our new judicial committee can take care of that. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the core. Fine. Uh, I'll I, I, I will, I, I I will have, interpret this uh, to be a challenge to the ruling of the chair. Uh, yes. And... That takes a majority to overturn. No, two, two, uh, two, uh, but this is the chair, so a majority. It's a majority vote to support or oppose the chair. Majority vote. But this was not a ruling of the chair; it was a ruling of the body. The body voted two thirds right. to make and this change. The chair let the, the vote happen. The, the, yeah. Right. It, the action of the chair was to allow the vote to happen, <laughs> and that ruling is being challenged. Sorry, I didn't think about this earlier. Yep, that's fine. And you know, if I'm wrong on this, I'm wrong on this. And you know, I'm trying to let the body direct this as much as possible. And I do thank you for your input. Uh, all in favor of sustaining the ruling of the chair, say aye. 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 All opposed. Nay. Nay. Show of hands, all in favor of sustaining the ruling of the chair so that we would essentially change the rules of the vote in the middle of the vote. Three, four, Thanks, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, all in favor of overturning the ruling of the chair. The chair counts eight hands plus his own is nine. So the <laughs> ruling of the chair is sustained, so the rules of the vote were changed in the middle of the vote. All in favor of electing Caleb Dyer, Rosalie Babiars, Chip Spangler, and Brian Chabot to the Judicial Committee say aye. Aye. Any opposed? It passes. <laughs> you can cease counting. Thank you. <laughs> we will now move to considerations of amendments to the Constitution and the bylaws. If you have a program in front of you, those begin on page. 19. Uh, did, there's been a call for a break. How long? Five minutes. Second. Five minutes. Any uh, opposed to taking a five minute break?
And don't forget, there's no opposition, so we will take a break until 3.30. And don't forget about the silent auction and the 50-50 raffle. Silent auction ends in two hours and five minutes. Winners are announced in two hours and 30 minutes. It is 3.33 p.m. Uh, we were scheduled to take a five minute recess. We are three minutes past that schedule. Uh, motion to readjourn would be in order. Motion made. Second. So moved, second. Reconvene, thank you. Uh, any objection to reconvening? Hearing none, uh, we will begin with amendments to uh, bylaws and the Constitution, uh, but I know that we had a modification in the number of delegates in attendance. Uh, if we could get that updated information. Uh, could the registration desk please give me the updated delegate total? I added one. Brian? We added one delegate. We added one delegate. We added one delegate. So we now have 35. Yes. A two thirds majority would be what? 24. And a three quarter majority? Seven. And 18 would be a simple majority. Uh, there's a uh, different level that's needed for the bylaws and the Constitution. The bylaws require a simple majority. The Constitution requires three quarters majority. Uh, the proposals again begin on page 19. A lot of these are housekeeping measures. Uh, the first proposal is to correct the spelling of the word bylaw in the Constitution uh, from being a hyphenated word to being a single word without a hyphen, as is correct. Uh, this amendment should also include changing all references in the bylaws to be spelled correctly as well. Uh, so, need a three-quarter majority to correct the spelling in the Constitution, a simple majority to correct the spelling in the bylaws. What? Oh, chat. Oh, what about it. I know it's somebody else's in there. I know. Uh, so, it's been moved. Is there a second to Proposal 1 that's in the program? Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor of adopting Proposal 1 that would correct the spelling of bylaws. Is that you have a point of information or you're voting? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Opposed. There's one opposed, <laughs> which is not more than is requisite. Proposal 1 has been adopted. The spelling of bylaws will be corrected. Uh, do you have a point of information? Yes. Um, we were just handed a packet. Is this to be considered as an amendment to the to the to the list of proposals, or is this equal what's in the colored? Uh, uh, whatever was just handed out would be considered after we consider anything in the program. So additional proposals. Yes. Correct. Correct. Thank you. Uh, the packet handed out is actually a set of five separate proposals four separate amendments to the Constitution, and a set of addi additions to Bylaw 1 that could accompany those changes to the Constitution to rectify the bylaws with the Constitution. Uh, proposal 2 in the packet is to, again, a housekeeping measure. Currently, we have nothing in either the Constitution or the bylaws that allows us to modify the party platform. However, we are required to have a platform committee come up with proposals for a modified platform. Uh, so proposal two is three separate additions to the Constitution. Uh, the first is to add Article 9, Section 3D 
to allow consideration of modifications to the party platform. The second part of this is a new Article 6, and the rest of the Constitution would be renumbered accordingly uh, to state as follows. Uh, the Statement of Principles affirms that philosophy upon which Libertarian Party is founded, by which it shall be sustained, and through which liberty shall prevail. The enduring importance of the Statement of Principles requires that it may be amended only by a vote of seven-eighths of all registered delegates at a regular convention. The party platform shall include but not be limited to the Statement of Principles and the implementation of those principles in the form of planks. The current platform shall serve as the basis of all future platforms. The existing platform may be amended only at a regular convention. Additional planks or additions to planks must be approved by a two-third majority. A platform blank may be deleted by a majority vote and add Article 13, Section 2 that states as follows. Article 6, Section 1 shall not be amended by a vote of less than seven-eighths of all registered delegates at a regular convention. And this wording uh, for the proposed Article 6 as well as Article 13, Section 2 is taken directly from the national party platform. Uh, is there someone wishing to be recognized? Uh, yes, I'd like to make a motion to divide the question to consider each separately. There's a motion to divide the question. Any opposition to dividing the question? A second to that. Yes. Second. Thank you. Uh, it's been seconded. Any opposition to dividing the question? Hearing none, the question will be divided. Uh, the motion is on the floor. Is there a second to the motion? The, the motion uh, for proposal two uh, to add Article 9, Section 3D is the first part of this question that has been divided. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there, second? is there discussion? Page 19. Page 19. Proposal 2, the first one. Proposal 2, number 1. And again, this would allow us to actually consider amendments to the platform, which is something, again, we're required to have a platform committee that comes up with proposals, but uh, the governing documents do not allow us to amend the platform currently. And you're looking for a second to the motion? Uh, the motion had been seconded. Uh, there was a question about where were we and what the proposal was. Anyone wishing to speak either in favor or against the motion? I mean, this is just house cleaning more than anything. Yeah. So. Yeah, no. Anyone else wishing to be recognized? Seeing none. Uh, all in favor of adding Article 9, Section 3D, say aye. 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 Any opposed? I heard one nay, that is not enough to uh, prevent this from being adopted, that has been adopted. Uh, the next motion is to add Article 6, Statement of Principles and Platform, and then we would renumber accordingly, and again, the language in front of us is basically the same language that's in the National Party platform, or in the National Party uh, bylaws about the platform. So the motion is on the floor. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Would anyone like to speak in favor or against? Call a question. Call a question. Question has been called. All in favor of adding Article 6 and renumbering accordingly? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, it passes. Uh, the next proposal is to add Article 13, Section 2 would be new Article 14, uh, but we're going to continue using the existing uh, numbering. This again states Article 6, Section 1 shall not be amended by a vote of less than seven-eighths of all registered delegates at a regular convention. And again, this is the wording from the National Party Bylaws. The motion is on the floor. Is there a second? Seconded. Seconded. Anyone like to speak in favor or opposition? Seeing none, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, it passes. 
We now move to proposal three, which is on page 20. And this is a proposal, again, to streamline and correct that uh, difference that exists between the bylaws and the Constitution, where the Constitution mentions a single vice chair. The bylaws currently mention multiple vice chairs. Uh, you will see again the proposal is to reword bylaw 1 section 3 to remove a good chunk and uh, read as follows the vice chair shall be an assistant to the chair performing such duties as the chair shall prescribe and holding such executive power as the chair shall delegate and shall perform the duties of the chair as the executive committee may direct should the chair be unable for any reason to perform those duties and would also amend the Constitution, Article 4, Section 7, to read as follows. The Vice Chair shall act as an assistant to the Chair, performing such duties as the Chair shall prescribe, and holding such executive power as the Chair shall delegate, and shall perform the duties of the Chair as the Executive Committee may direct, should the Chair be unable for any reason to perform those duties. Again, this proposal makes sure that Article 4, Section 7 and Bylaw 1, Section 3 read the same as far as the duties of the Vice Chair. <coughs> Jessica. Point of information, I'm not sure if this is. Um, the column that says Constitution Amendment and the final wording are actually different. Uh, at the beginning of the amendment says, shall act as an assistant, and the final wording column says, Shall be an assistant. I don't know if that matters, but uh, that, was a, uh, that, that was a typo, and that will be uh, corrected. The wording in the middle, uh, where it says amendment, is the wording that we are voting on. Uh, and let me see. Where was that again? In the Constitution? Yep. Constitution yes. final wording. Right here. Yep. Shall be strike B at as act as. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you. So the final wording has been corrected. Uh, it's been moved and seconded. Is there discussion? Which form are you using? Uh, to where the final wording is the same as what is in the uh, proposal in the middle, so that it says the vice chair shall act as an assistant to the chair. In both such instances, bylaws and constitution? Yes. Uh, Chip. A uh, point of information, I just want to make sure that the, the part that's being deleted about the how um, vice chairs are chosen by ballot, I assume that it just defaults to uh, the portion. The vice chair would be chosen in the chosen same manner as other members other, and because of the Roberts right. rules or whatever else. Of Correct. The, the language being stricken refers to being elected by geographical area. And since we have only elected one vice chair for the past many years and the uh, Constitution specifies only one vice chair, we're clarifying the uh, difference between the bylaws and the Constitution. Okay. Any further discussion on the proposal? Hearing none, all in favor of adopting Proposal 3 say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. One nay, it passes. We move to proposal four on page 21. This again is a uh, proposal that would amend both the bylaws and the constitution, uh, clarifying some language to make it a little bit easier to read. Uh, the bylaw three would be amended to say the following, section one, the chair of the convention committee specified in article eight, section two of the constitution shall be pres presiding officers of his or her respective committee. Section two would say a majority of the committee is necessary for a due pass recommendation. And in the case of platform committee, a majority must approve each specific plank. Section three would read the committee shall report their recommendations to the floor of the convention section four and section five would remain unchanged the constitution article eight section two would read as follows for each regular convention the executive committee shall appoint chairs for the 
subsection A, platform committee, uh, that letter A should not be there after platform committee, uh, subsection B, constitution, bylaws, and rules committee, section C, credentials committee, and section D, other such committees as the chair and executive committee may together deem appropriate. The motion is on the floor. Is there a second? Second. Been moved and seconded. Uh, would anyone like to speak in favor or against? Uh, I have a request for information, I guess. Um, yes. Uh, what was it? Uh, new, um, in the amendment, the changes to section three, removing uh, minority reports. Um, I'd like, I'd like, if anyone, whoever, whoever's making this, to clarify why you remove that from section three. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be good. Uh, I'm the person that drafted this, and I believe I was simply trying to streamline some of the language. Also, I was not able to find any party rules that things would be adopted in accordance with. Uh, so it was an attempt to streamline some language, not an attempt to uh, in any way infringe upon the majority of the platform committee. So the intent is not to um, remove minority reports, you're just Correct. not saying one way or the other? Correct. Okay. Further discussion? Call the question. Yeah, my question question has been called. Uh, would, would uh, I'm in a pickle here because I had recognized someone before the question was called and then the question was called. Uh, do you have a problem with him withdraw. speaking? I withdraw my motion. The motion to call the question has been withdrawn, Dan Fishman. Yeah, if I might suggest a friendly amendment so that the uh, platform committee doesn't get bogged down before the uh, convention, perhaps put a uh, two week or one month. What's going on? I am a member. He's a member, he's not a delegate. Not a voting member. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, that perhaps you might add a uh, timeline so the platform committee doesn't get overwhelmed with suggestions prior to convention. Perhaps two weeks uh, must be presented to the platform committee before the convention in order to be considered. Would anyone like to speak either in favor or against the friendly amendment? Uh, no, Connor, you were the chair of the platform committee. Would you like to weigh in on this? Uh, not at this time, no. Okay. Uh, so, point of information? Yes. The, the rule, so the bylaw says that the, com the committee makes their report to the floor of the convention. Correct. So does the executive, has the executive committee set any rules for when reports are due before the convention? Uh, we did set a rule that we needed the report a minimum of two weeks prior so that we could get it in the program. Unfortunately, the program went to the printer before we got the proposals. Uh, so so I, I would like to, in the future, have at least a 30-day prior to convention, uh, which would mean that we would need to start planning the convention a lot sooner than four and a half months prior to the convention. So, is the chair saying the executive committee will set deadlines for submissions for the convention reports? Yes. Okay. The motion is on the floor to amend the bylaws and the constitution. Again, remember it needs simple majority to amend the bylaws, three quarter majority to amend the constitution. All in favor of proposal four as seen on page 24. What about the friendly amendment? Yeah. It wasn't a second. The friendly amendment was not accepted. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Proposal four has been adopted. Proposal five is on page 22. Uh, again, this is streamlining some language to where currently the Constitution uh, references a section of the bylaws uh, Article 7, Section 1 is in reference to the members of the Executive Committee, and currently Section 1B says the Chair of the Standing Committee is holding office pursuant to the bylaws. 
the proposal is to specify what those two standing committees are and strike the reference to the bylaw and also to strike the bylaw uh, so that Article 7, Section 1B would now read the chair of the membership committee and judicial committee and bylaw 7 would be stricken. I have a friendly amendment. In my opinion, having the the chair of the judicial committee on the body that it may have to rule for or against is a conflict of interest. I would suggest removing and judicial committee from this section just because that conflict of interest could be a big deal. That has been seconded and I will accept the friendly amendment. Are you also uh, proposing to retain the wording that exists in bylaw 7 to reference standing committees saying that standing committees would elect chairs and members at convention. Yeah, I believe we'd have to. So the amended proposal that is on the floor uh, is to reword Article 7, Section 1B to say the chair of the membership committee and the bylaw 7 would stay intact so that would not be stricken. Uh, the motion has been made and seconded is there further discussion on proposal five? Point of order. Yes. As this is as this is published, you actually have to you have to have a vote on as it stands. Then you'd have to have a vote on the as it's amended, so that one or the other is your two choices. So you either vote for as written or you vote as suggested. That's, that's, your, that's your parliamentary option. Thank you. So the uh, proposal before us has not been amended. We will need to reject the proposal before us to hear the amendment. Uh, so all in favor of passing proposal 5 say aye. All opposed? Aye. Nay. Nay. Proposal 5 has been rejected and there is an amendment to be heard. I make a, make a motion to repropose Proposal 5 and just strike and Judicial Committee. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Further discussion? Can we, clarification, is that the first part of 5 or the whole thing? Uh, well, it would be the whole thing. thing. Also adding yeah. in Bylaw 7. Thank you. Uh, bylaw 7 would stay yes. in existence, so it's just the <coughs> amendment to the Constitution, Article 7, Section 1B. Further discussion? Rich, did you have something to say? I thought you walked up to the microphone. I want a clarification whether it's keeping the bylaw or not. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, it passes. Proposal 6 is to add a constitutional amendment, uh, Article 10, dealing with primary elections, which we will have now. Uh, this states, in the event the Libertarian Party of New Hampshire is entitled to a primary election, no voter who is not registered as Libertarian should, shall be allowed to vote in the Libertarian Party primary. And just want to point out, because I figure this will be a question, New Hampshire state law does allow a party to opt out of the semi-open primaries that exist. I learned of this from the Secretary of State's office, uh, one of the few times that I think they did give me some good relevant information. Uh, so this would just specify that the Libertarian Party only wants people that are registered Libertarians. Uh, it would then prohibit undeclared voters from changing their registration on election day to take a Libertarian Party primary ballot and possibly give us a candidate that we might not want via write-in. Uh, Brian Chabot, if you could go to the microphone, please. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but in the state of New Hampshire, can you not change your registration the day of the primary yep. and then change it? Currently, primary? you can. Okay. And a party can opt out of allowing undeclared voters to vote in their primary by doing such. 
meaning that a voter uh, wishing to register as libertarian, right. uh, if this passes, would need to do so 90 days prior to the primary. All right. Uh, so that undeclared and people that are registered members of other parties would not be able to change their registration to get one of our primary ballots. So that would be different from the way the Democrats and the Republicans currently do it? Correct. The Republicans and Democrats have not opted out of the semi-open primaries that currently right. exist. That was a clarification I Thank you. Um, Chair recognizes Caleb Dyer. Are, are we in discussion currently? Yes. Um, quick question. <coughs> Would it be in our best interests to um, close our primary to undeclared voters? Um, I, I see our goal as being to increase membership in the party. Um, I, I don't know if I would support this at this time. I, I think it is probably best if we are to have our primary remain open, as the major parties do. Um, one out of reference to the open primary that we have in New Hampshire, but also that um, we are, you know, desiring to grow. Um, this is one of the best ways to grow the party. Um, that's my two cents. Uh, I was just wondering if the chair had any um, bearing as to, you know, basically what was the motivation behind the chair wishing to opt out under statute? Uh, the motivation of the chair, and I'm the one that wrote this proposal, uh, is because I have heard a lot of discussion from people that, quite frankly, do not have our best interest in mind, saying that they will get a Libertarian Party ballot and then try to have us have Chris Sununu as our gubernatorial nominee, and I don't believe that the Libertarian Party should be nominating Republicans and Democrats. We should be nominating Libertarians. Here, here. I, yeah, I, I don't know, man. Uh, Max Abramson, you're recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to speak against this measure for two reasons. Uh, number one is what we found with other, obviously we need to grow the party in terms of size. And what we found with other minor parties everywhere else in the country, in the United States, the really successful uh, third parties, the Moderate Party of Rhode Island, the Independent Party of Oregon, the Independent Party of Louisiana, and so forth. The successful ones, people find out about them sometimes for the first time when they walk in in September, in the September primary. And if you exclude them, they see that ballot there and it's not an option, then they have a tendency to walk away. The other issue is having open primaries that are open to undeclared, moderates, what have you, as long as they're not activists. The other advantage is that it brings more people uh, uh, more candidates into the primary. Those of us who believe in the Big Ten strategy, and I don't mean it's a difference in policy. Uh, when I first joined the Libertarian Party of Washington 15 or 16 years ago as a, as a dues-paying member, uh, one of the first things that I heard, and one of the reasons that the Libertarian Party of Washington is one of the largest and most successful third parties anywhere in the, in the country, is because they bring people in first, and once they are in the Libertarian Party, then they become more Libertarian on the issues. It doesn't, it has never made sense to me that we should be a small tent party where you have to learn everything about Libertarian policy and ideas from the outside, from the standpoint of being an Independent or Republican or Democrat. That seems counterintuitive to me, counterproductive to me. I've always believed that we should be a big tent party that you bring people in first, then they learn the policies, then they learn the ideas, and the, the single best way to do that, in my opinion, is to have an open primary that attracts more candidates, it attracts better candidates, um, and it also allows us, I think, to, uh, to grow much more quickly. Is there anyone who would like to speak in favor of the motion? Chair recognizes Roger Paxton. There's probably nobody in this room who is more big tent than me when it comes to growing the Libertarian Party. Jess and I grew the Libertarian Party of Arkansas doing that exact thing. The issue that I have with this, well, with not changing this, is that you will have non-libertarians nominating non-libertarians for office. And then, how are people going to learn the principles and the ideals of the Libertarian Party if you have non-libertarians representing the party at the ballot? That's a big concern for me. Now, yes, the party absolutely should be Big Tent. Invite the horde to church, 
But don't have her preaching from the pulpit the next Sunday. Is there anyone who would like to speak against the proposal? George, George you're recognized. Thank you. The, the predominant voter in this state is an undeclared or unaffiliated voter. If we're going to wall them off, then we're going to be working against one of our greatest uh, proponents, which is the New Hampshire Independent Voters. Unfortunately, Tiani Coleman's in New York for their convention. She couldn't speak on this, but they've been consistently supportive of having open balloting, libertarian access, and for us to slam the door in their face and voters like them is going to be counterproductive. I'm with Max. We need to go and bring people to us and give them the opportunity to do so. If we're concerned that somebody can upstage our libertarian candidates, then we have to elect better people within this organization to represent us at the ballot. We can't be sitting here walling it off saying, well, we're going to put an unsavory candidate up for the average voter, but we're going to insist that that's the only option that they have. We, as an organization, have to put forth the best possible people and then sell that person to the electorate. Thank you. Brian Jones, are you speaking in favor or against? In favor. You are recognized? We're a small party right now. We are very vulnerable if there is an activist movement to affect our primary. I would suggest that we protect ourselves at this time, and when we grow, consider opening up the primary at a future date. Anyone like to speak against the proposal? John Babiars, you are recognized. I've given this a lot of thought. I remember back in 2000 where the party almost had their gubernatorial uh, candidate hijacked. We had Gordon Humphrey actually walk in, and that's why we had a 30-day rule. Actually, it was six months or a year prior to for a candidate to run for that high office. The state has a mechanism right now that even if we go through the primary process, and that is in June in Declaration of Candidacy, as a Republican, they cannot register to be on that primary ballot. They have to be a Libertarian. So that's our first checkpoint, is in June, Declaration of Candidacy. All right? So somebody fearing Sununu running on our ballot, not going to happen because he would have to change his registration to Libertarian in order to be on our primary ballot. Now, does that prevent them from doing a writing? No, it does not. But if our candidate can't override them, then our candidate and our party has not done enough good groundwork. Because for them to override on a write-in ballot would be, quote, putting their candidate in jeopardy on a write-in on their side from Democrats doing it. So from a tactical standpoint, I think there's, a, there's enough protection mechanism. I personally would view that we should not be even having a primary until we get near 10%. That way we have a solid base. But being Correct. as the law is at this point, we're going to have to go working within the confines, and that is why I'm against this amendment. I don't want to uh, tie our party up. Uh, Brian Chabot, did you want to speak in favor or again? Do you have a question? Please go to the microphone. <clears throat> uh, this amendment does raise a number of good questions that people have already brought up. My question is, is there some way that we can prevent non-libertarians from being written in? Is there any way to say, for instance, that Brightons must be a current member of the Libertarian Party? Currently, there is not. Currently, there is uh, no law that allows us to reject a primary winner that wins via write-in. Uh, there is a proposal that did pass the Senate, SB 114, that would specify that a candidate can only be the nominee of one political party. Uh, so if that passes, that would give us some protection for making sure that someone's not on the ballot twice, but it still would not give us full protection of allowing us to reject a write-in candidate. Thank you very much. Uh, anyone else like to speak in favor of the motion? Against. Uh, final speaker, against. Hi, I'm Colonel Fogarty from Pittsfield. I'm, in, I'm against this proposal for the simple fact that there are so many undeclared people that do not even know that you can register as Libertarian now. And 
when I went to go vote in my recent town elections, they never unregistered as public parent, obviously, but they didn't even tell people that that was an option at the voting booth. So I think we should leave it open for unprepared people because that's how they will learn about us. Because unless people are looking at the Libertarian website of New Hampshire, they're not going to know. Most voters who are undeclared aren't really that politically savvy, really. So that would give them an option to pick the Libertarian ballot and vote in the primary and possibly add to our base. And that would be like, really important, especially now that we're still so small. Thank you. Thank you. Unless there's a speaker in favor, we will vote on Proposal 6. All in favor of adopting Proposal 6 to close our primaries, say... Division vote? Yes. Can we, yeah. Can we divide on this? Uh, vote first. There's only one vote. What? It's, just it, it, it's only one proposal, so there's no way to divide the question. If you're asking for a show of hands... Yeah, yeah, a show of hands. Uh, yeah. There's been a request for a show of hands. All in favor of adopting Article 10, raise your hand. Uh, Mr. Uh, McKnight, if you could help count hands, please. Although now looking up and seeing that it's not that many. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I count nine. All opposed? That's overwhelming. Thank you. Proposal six has been rejected. Uh, there are no more proposals in the program. Uh, it is currently 10 minutes after 4. We still need to get to the platform. Uh, I would like a recommendation from the Vice Chair on if we should open up the floor to further proposals or go ahead and go to the platform. I think additional proposals would be under new business, so I believe that we should go on to the platform. All right, uh, Mr. Connor, as the chair of the platform committee, uh, you are now the man of the hour. Thank you. Uh, the platform is what well, was handed out in a separate packet. It is not in your program. Um, it should have at the top platform of the Libertarian Party of New Hampshire and Blue. Correct, and the current platform is uh, within the program. So, uh, my name is uh, Neil Connor. I was chairing the platform committee in addition to uh, Brian, Joe, Sean, and Roger. Uh, to give you a little bit of uh, idea about our process, while we did consult the 2016 platform, uh, we did not necessarily construct this as specific amendments to uh, and repeal of the current platform. So if it is consistent with the Constitution as adopted, uh, should this be agreeable to everyone and maybe easiest uh, to vote up or down? And if voted down, uh, I do have uh, basically a diff uh, between the two platforms. Uh, and uh, I will first, though, go through the differences, uh, let you know what has been concatenated, what has been uh, added and uh, some language which has uh, been reformed. So the preamble and statement of principles remain the same. The preamble is that of the Libertarian, uh, the National Libertarian Party that was adopted in May of 2016. The statement of principles, also that of LP National, uh, that was adopted in convention in 1974. Uh, Mr. Connor, yes. I have a point of information. Uh, Colorado did a similar rewrite of their entire platform last year, and the motion that was made before they began the rewrite was a motion to strike the entire platform except for the preamble and statement of principles. Uh, so that might be the motion that you would like to make. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, shall we entertain a, a motion now to do that? I'll make the motion. <laughs> okay. Second. Any second? Second. All right. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, all opposed? Okay. So we have now remaining the uh, preamble and statement of principles, which I, I think is uh, quite comprehensive. But uh, 
let us uh, indeed go into this. So uh, we have constructed uh, a, a three-sectional, uh, four-sectional, uh, the individual, market, and the community, as well as omissions, and omissions was also included in the prior platform as well, and that is a catch-all, uh, which I think is quite appropriate. So to contrast between the 2016 platform, uh, civil, liberty, uh, civil liberty, uh, essentially now becomes split into civil rights and privacy, 1.1 and 1.2 uh, under the individual. And the, the purpose of that, well, the, the prior civil liberty section was essentially uh, two uh, dictionary definitions uh, sandwiching a opposition to federal policy. So we wanted to uh, both associate individual rights with civil, uh, civil rights start out a little more strongly, uh, and uh, also separate privacy as a very important uh, platform plank in this age of Snowden. Uh, so uh, I can read this aloud, or? Uh, no need. No need, okay. So if everyone has uh, read the civil rights and pri uh, privacy, I think we can start to uh, you know, entertain motions on adopting these planks plank by plank. Uh, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Any motions to adopt civil rights? One so, uh, so should, could we make a motion to adopt the whole thing first, just to see if it passes and maybe save some time? Has everyone had a chance to read it? Yeah. I said give us five minutes. A question if we can. Uh, a recess of five minutes. Can't hear you. I, I thought the Constitution called for adoption of planks individually only. I, I could be wrong. Is the new Constitution now in effect? Yes. Okay. Okay, so there is that's not specified in our constitution. Oh, uh, yeah, we need an impromptu meeting of the judicial one. The old one. Seeing as how neither the constitution nor the bylaws specify when the new proposals take effect as the ruling of the chair that they take effect immediately, which does allow us to consider amendments to the platform. Uh, may, I, may I challenge that ruling uh, to have it take effect at the end of the convention? Uh, that would mean that we would not be allowed to consider amendments to the platform, which means that the vote that we just took would not have actually happened. There's All nothing right. in the Constitution allowing us to change the, the platform. Right. Oh, yo, yo, That's yo. why we had that, oh, oh, that proposal <laughs> to allow us to change I, I got you. the platform. Again, the platform shall include but not be limited to statement of principles and implementation of these. The current platform shall serve as the basis, uh, may be amended only at regular convention. Additional planks or additions to planks must be approved by a two-third vote. A platform plank may be deleted by a majority vote. Uh, the reference to adopting plank by plank was the platform committee yes. adopting the proposals plank by plank. Uh, Rich Tommaso, you are recognized. By the logic you're talking about, we could never have um, approved the platform to begin with. So very clear precedent that this body can adopt a platform. Um, adopt but not amend. What's the difference? Yeah. One is adopting that we have something, the other is changing what you have. The platform committee submits a report that is accepted or rejected by the body. If it's different text or the same text, it's still the same process. So, and I also think that amendments to the Constitution take effect. Our, our precedent has been they take effect at the close of the convention, uh, unless specified otherwise. That's, that has been long, um, uh, policy of this of this party. So if the, if the chair if the chair's ruling is that this uh, page 19 is taking effect now, then I would challenge the ruling of the chair on that. There's been a challenge to the ruling of the chair. <laughs> is there a second? Seconded. It's been moved and seconded. Please go to a microphone. Well, <laughs> yeah. Um, Uh, the reason why I have seconded this motion was uh, so that a subsequent motion could be made to suspend the rules so that we may resolve this and then move on to the platform um, so that we can, you know, 
adopt the ability to um, actually discuss the platform and adopt it. <coughs> so. Would anyone else like to speak either in favor or against? Uh, I'll, speak, I'll speak against just because I think that we need to change the platform and to do so we have to uh, we have to go with the ruling of the chair. So I think that we need to uh, accept the ruling of the chair. And uh, to sustain the ruling of the chair is majority or two-thirds? It's majority. 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 Uh, all in favor of upholding the ruling of the chair that the uh, amendment to the Constitution that we passed earlier go into effect immediately. Say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. I believe the ayes had it. Division. Yeah. Uh, there's been a request for a show of hands. All in favor of upholding the ruling of the chair. Uh, Mr. McKnight, uh, we will need assistance on counting hands, please. I went to public school. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. You know, how, can you put your hands down after I count you? Please? Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. I count 20. And all those uh, in favor of overturning That's the ruling of the chair? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The ruling of the chair stands. Thank you. I'm glad we didn't have to reference this. Was the motion to drop the platform in order then? The motion was passed before there was a challenge to the chair, so yeah. I, would, I would absolutely say yes. Okay, so we are without a platform now, and uh, <laughs> uh, in accordance though with the newly passed uh, constitutional amendment, then it would require a two-thirds vote to adopt uh, any new platform planks, and I think that would also apply to the entirety of the platform if we are voting up or down on it. Uh, does anyone need more time to review the proposed platform? I'm also happy to briefly go over it in terms of difference. Okay. Uh, is there a motion to adopt uh, the proposed platform as written? I'll make such motion. Is there a second? Seconded. Okay. Uh, anyone speaking in favor or opposition of that? Speak in favor. Uh, I was part of the platform committee and uh, spent a lot of time writing the language and tweaking the language with my fellow members, and I feel like this is a, a good departure from the more minimal platform that we had before but it's also a cogent, positive statement of uh, advances that we can make in the Libertarian Party and something that can hopefully serve as a basis uh, to recruit more people. And uh, I'm very eager to uh, continue to push for positive identification with the Libertarian Party rather than uh, just as an alternative to two-party duopoly. And I think that this platform uh, very clearly states uh, a lot of our principles in terms of things that we can take action on at a local level and reflects uh, our principles as a, as a group. Thank you. Point of information. Uh, if this motion passes, would that... Speak on the microphone, please. I'm sorry. If, if this motion passes, would that prevent us from uh, afterwards proposing minor amendments to, uh, to individual planks. I don't think it would. Thank you. Anyone else speaking? All right. Seeing none. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Brian. And if you're going to speak, if you could be prepared near the microphone, that way you sorry. don't have to walk over towards it. Um, well, as a, as a whole, this is wonderful. There is one issue that I have with it in one plank okay. um, that I would be opposed to simply, not because of the libertarian principles, but because it could open us up to a lot of scrutiny from the public, which would reduce the possibility of our people getting elected because of it. 
Um, and that would be 2.3 professional licensing. Um, again, while it is fully in compliance with our principles, and I'm not against it in, in principle, I do think that would open us up to some really bad PR. When they say unlicensed doctors, etc., there will be people that are going to come down on us for that. Uh, would you would you make a motion to amend the proposal before? Uh, I would like to make a mo motion to amend. Yes. Second. Uh, second. That's <laughs> right. Uh, I was just on order. Right. Okay. Uh, would you be okay with uh, uh, putting forth that motion yeah. after adoption yes. of yes, it has it written? Okay. Yep. Call the question. <clears throat> All right. Calling the question. Second. Seconded. All right. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All right. Proposed uh, platform is uh, passed. And now we can go ahead and if anyone has uh, motions to add, uh, that would take a two thirds vote. Can we have it right here? No. Politics, I'd like to yeah. propose a motion to uh, strike 2.3 professional licensing. Coming up for some fine Point of order. Uh, yes. Should this not follow a new business if the proposals to the Constitution and the bylaws were pushed to new business? Shouldn't new proposals to the platform? Um, or should this be part of the platform? Yeah, it should be new business as well, I believe. Yeah. But, but we're moving on to new I'm business. Cool. I'm cool. We're, we're now on new business. Yeah. New yeah. business. Just business. Just point order, that's all. <laughs> all right. So as new business, I'd like to propose that we strike 2.3 from our uh, platforms? Uh, that would require a simple majority, in that case, to delete. Uh, second. Uh, there is a second. All right. Uh, anyone speaking in favor or against? Uh, I'd like to speak in, in against the motion. Um, I was very passionate about including this, this pr proposal in the blank. Um, I think that this is actually an area where a lot of disenfranchised Republicans and Democrats can come to an agreement and sort of see liberty as a sensible way forward. Uh, when you ask people, well, what good does the government do? And they say, oh, well, it protects us. It protects us through these licensing and making sure that these things go through. That does sort of ring true until you say, oh, but what about hairdressers? Do they need 2,000 hours and, and this artificial barrier to entry? What about lawyers? Well, that's keeping the price of lawyers artificially high. That's damaging society. That's damaging liberty. Uh, the same thing with doctors and the same thing with teachers. The same thing with any professional licensed person. The best mechanism to ensure that we address this is the free market. And this is not just, oh, this is something that we sort of think. This is um, both an end in itself and a means to an end in addressing what the Libertarian Party can do for individual people, and this will help to tell the stories that the Democrats and the Republicans have so long been able to tell. I met somebody who was impacted by this. I was met by a hairdresser who couldn't saw, who could not ply her trade because this licensing meant that she had to spend ten thousand dollars to get licensing by the state. This is an inappropriate use of state resources, and it, it goes to a tangible thing that people can feel and can resonate with voters and direct them to the Libertarian Party. And uh, for that reason, I oppose the motion to strike from the platform. I uh, also want to speak against this motion. Uh, we're Libertarians, that means we're the party of principle. Uh, before you speak against, if anyone would like to speak in favor, so if we need to alternate uh, in favor and opposed. I have a substitute, where would you classify that? Friendly amendment, if Brian agrees. Yeah, yeah. I think it is a friendly. We've spoken about this. All right. So, okay. if it's an order? Yeah. All right, so um, I propose, um, instead of dropping uh, 2.3, um, I propose to just get rid of a few sentences of it. I think it preserves the, uh, oh, sorry, I'll make my thing before speaking for it. Um, so keep the, fir keep the first, uh, first, third, and last sentence, so it would read, each person has the inalienable right to earn a living by the fruits of their labor. Requiring professionals to carry licenses restricts worker mobility and competition, which leads to higher consumer prices. Professionals are best regulated when they are forced to compete for consumers without interference from the state. So that would be the first, third, and fifth. Correct. Uh, so Jill. And if I may speak in favor? Okay. 
Yes, so I understand there's lots of concerns about uh, on both sides. You know, you say, oh, you shouldn't regulate any profession. Oh, but what about the guy doing eye surgery on him? I want to make sure he's, you know, legit. Um, I did, um, yeah, I have sort of two minds on this, but I think we do need to make a statement because professional licensing in New Hampshire is actually, we're in the bottom half, I believe. And we do need to address this, and this is, a, this is actually a very big issue. Um, so I do think we need to say something about it. Um, but I, as we pointed out, bad, bad, bad marketing and bad communication um, has been some a problem for us. So until we can start to get the public fully on our side on this, I think um, maybe not leading with our chin so much on this uh, would be a better goal. But by still stating our principles and still giving giving the public the direction we want them to go in. Um, so that's that's my motion, and I'm sticking to it. Okay, I, I recognize the sentiment. I, I do want to underscore that our the first line of the statement of principles is that uh, we, the members of the Libertarian Party, challenge the cult of the omnipotent state. So if, if we are looking to be uh, slightly more marketable, that. Uh, that first. That. Um, I don't know, uh, I like it. I'd like to speak that. against both of these proposals. Uh, we're the party of principle, that means we should stick to those principles and we don't need to water things down. We're not going to get everybody from the public to be on board with these ideas, ever. Uh, that's okay. We don't need everyone to be on board with them. There are going to be a lot of people who will use our positions to fear monger about what will happen if we get the state out of our lives. Oh my god, the sky is falling. Uh, let's stick to principles. Thank you. Uh, Ron? Uh, Mark Max Havers on the platform, I don't care. Are you speaking for or against? Uh, are you speaking for or against? I'm speaking in favor of uh, Richard Mossel's position. Okay. Uh, I absolutely support 2.3. In fact, um, as we found in our research in urban areas, occupational licensing is a big, big issue. And it, it, it's something that we can reach into large sections of the community that are norm normally not accessible. People who lose their opportunity to work, to earn a living because of favoritism and protectionism and uh, cronyism. And frankly, it is cronyism. And I think everyone now recognizes it as cronyism. We used to have only 8% of Americans uh, who had to get an occupational license in order to work. And I think that was 8% too many. Or 7% too many, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but now it's almost 30%. So you have people being kept out of almost every high-paying occupation. You can't get your foot in the door. It's almost impossible to get a license. And what do they do? As soon as people start getting their foot in the door, they raise the bar. And an anesthesiologist now has to go through 14 years of college in some states to learn to turn it on. Uh, what I would like to do is just strike the last sentence. I don't, I don't think that we need to, to go the full monkey, but I definitely would like to keep uh, the first paragraph of 2.3. So, was that a so motion that to amend? Right, is that a second motion? Or a third? <laughs> um, I, I would like to uh, amend the first paragraph of 2.3. Okay. Second. 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 Bring so forward one of the Okay, thank you. The motion's been amended. Though. Yeah, have you seen the change? This, this is the current change. Each person. Sorry, I was in the restroom. This is the current motion. Okay, that, right. that, that was the one that I just spoke in favor of. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. in favor of this wording. Okay, okay. thank you. <laughs> Roger, back. Uh, I'd like to speak against the motion uh, primarily because, you know, I, I'm an IT, Brian's an IT as well, and we don't have to have state licensing to do our job. Um, so there are bodies out there that will give you certifications, licensings, that, can, that do not have to be done through the state. The state should not be picking winners and losers in the marketplace, ever. Um, also, currently we have this issue in the state of, to do African hair braiding, for example, you need 1,500 hours to get a license from the state to do African hair braiding. This is insanity. We need to get the state out of this. We need to be handling this in the free market. And uh, so I oppose this, this motion. Uh, someone in favor? Call okay. the vote. Against? Uh, I, I'd like to have the final word against. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I myself have 
several occupational licenses I'm forced to carry, not only by the state of New Hampshire, but I do work digitally in the insurance sector. I need to be licensed in all 50 states, plus the territories of D.C. and Puerto Rico for my job. Wow. Um, New Hampshire alone is not an issue. I pay $75 a year for that license. However, across the board nationally, that ranges. In some states, they give it to me for free as a veteran, and they waive the license. But there's other people who are barred from entry into the, the field because they can't afford the $1,000 a year fee for a DC insurance producer's license. Or they can't afford the $500 a year for the Montana insurance producer's license. Or that they can't afford the $10,000 every five years to register as an insurance producer in the state of Hawaii. And I think this is a huge issue. Um, and I'm fortunate enough that I'm successful enough in my business that I can afford those fees, and I can afford to maintain my business, but my competition is limited by the fact that other people who can get the same education and insurance knowledge as me by reading a book can't compete. All right, uh, Roger is calling the question. I'll second. Second. Okay, uh, so the motion is the friendly amendment uh, to the I professional licensing. Uh, we should vote on any discussion. You don't need to vote on any discussion. Okay, okay. okay. All right. That's fair. Is there a motion to end discussion? So moved. Second. Yeah. They called the question. You have to vote. Yeah. Well, now you can close the question. Just keep one. Yeah. You put the one to speak. Okay, seconded. So, all in favor of ending discussion? Aye. 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 All opposed? No. Okay. Uh, ayes have it. Uh, moving to question. Is there a motion to. Oh, motions are in motion. All right. So, we're voting on. So, we're voting on. All right. Uh, the friendly amendment. All in favor of the friendly amendment? Aye. 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 All opposed? No. no. Might have to have division. Yeah. Okay. Uh, show of hands, all in uh, favor? I mean, if it passes, then yeah. So, but it's going to be close. That's eight. Uh, nine. Uh, all opposed? Oh, that's more than nine. Do we need a, a simple majority? Yes. Simple majority, yeah. Okay. Uh, friendly, uh, friendly oh, amendment. Yeah, ideological period. The original motion, uh, if it's still on the floor, is to adopt professional licensing. I mean, uh, actually, I mean, if it was no, it's just strike this entirely. Right? entirely right? If the body was okay. going to vote to strike that, I would still right. want to. Unless there is a motion to strike it, so therefore, then the platform stands as is. Okay. Yeah. Any other new business? I'm happy. Any other new business as it relates to the platform? Yeah. I'd like to make a motion in regards to the uh, 3.5 environment. Um, I think we all stand in agreement that when people harm, when people harm us, we should be able to uh, pursue and get restitution for the, for the harm done. And the environment is, is, I would include the environment in that. However, we're all always polluting. Every one of us polluted to get here. And it's important to me that the platform speak to what we do in our daily lives. We try to live by our principles but we're not living by our principles when it comes to certain environmental concerns like driving a car. Every one of us is violating this agreement when we drove here, um, or violating this statement of principles when we, our platform when we drove here. I would, I would move to strike the third line and the last line from 3.5 environment. Sentence. Um, this, they, they, I would like to strike the sentence, polluters including environment should be held strictly liable for harms caused by pollution. In the last sentence, where damage is inflicted by the, to the environment, restitution to the injured party must be required because we need restitution for us driving our cars here. And I, under, and I understand, um, yeah, well, I guess it. May I second that? Okay. Uh, can, uh, so that would be a motion to amend, which ultimately would mean a two-thirds majority. Is there a, uh, Joletta, do you, is that? I'm down? just making sure that I have the wording correctly. Okay, thank yes. you. Yeah, that's you start the third sentence and the last sentence. Is there, is there a second to that? I did. Okay. Uh, anyone speaking in favor or against? 
Okay. I'm going to speak against it. I understand where she's coming from, and I, I do agree with her. But there's likely lots of planks in here that many of us do violate. The question is, who can be held? How can you be held responsible for that? And I think that this speaks to being held responsible for that. If if I pollute somebody's air on the way here, they could you know, sue me for restitution. And if somebody found, finds in their favor, then I should pay that restitution. So I think that already is covered in here. So I'm going to speak against it. Okay. Is there anyone speaking in favor? Uh, yes, I also agree with the speaker that um, you know we violate this, we do cause harms that are, go uncompensated, but the, the, the legal meaning of strictly liable for harms, harms in this context in the platform means legally cognizable yeah. harms. So something that you could go to a judge for, that you would have standing to sue for already, just recognizes the fact that we want the default not to be government legislative regulation, that we want it to be um, judicial action between uh, between private individuals who are actually suffering a legally cognizable harm. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else to speak? No question. All right. Motion to close discussion. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Uh, move to question. Is there a second? There was a second for the motion. Okay, so uh, all in favor of the amendment? Aye. Aye. Uh, can we have a show of hands then? All right, three. All opposed? Uh, motion passed. Any other new business related to the platform? Uh, quick motion to amend um, 3.1. Striking the word necessary and replacing with the word purpose. Could you speak up a little bit? Say it again, please. In 3.1, striking the word, uh, motion to strike the word necessary and replace with purpose. Uh, I'm not seeing that in 3.1. Uh, no, oh, it's necessary. On the board, she's got it. Purpose for the protection. Okay. Could you speak further as to the. Reasoning behind your question? Uh, to, to not conflate any uh, agreement with existence of yeah. certain statutes. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. good with that. Okay, is there a second for that motion? I'll second it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anyone else uh, speaking in favor or against? Um, I'll speak in favor. Okay. Uh, Darrell? I'm actually going to speak against. Uh, just because a lot of times the legislative bodies will say the purpose for this is, and then, you know, it's for the children, it's for the old people. They, they uh, you know, tempt their things as the purpose for this is to protect someone. Uh, so I, I think using the word purpose instead of necessary actually sort of opens it up a little bit more to basically say, well, as long as they can say that it's for this, but it's not actually necessary for that. So for those reasons, I would actually vote against the proposal. Thank you. Um, for similar reasons, actually, what Daryl just said, um, I would actually support the motion. I, I think the purpose is uh, likely better than necessary, as I think many in this room do not believe that certain criminal statutes uh, might be necessary. I think there are many criminal statutes on the books, namely a lot of drug laws, um, that are certainly not necessary. Um, you know, and they do not protect, they actually violate uh, life, liberty, and property. Um, I think purpose is probably a better word in that sentence, um, just to read it for the benefit of the body, where criminal statutes are purposed for the protection of life, liberty, and property. The punishment supplied should be appropriate to the crime. I think that that is slightly more clear than necessary, and I think it is slightly more in line with our principles. Thank you. I've got a uh, friendly amendment to propose on this one. Instead of our purpose, how about replace our necessary with just the word exist? Mm -hmm. Robert, look at what Robert, Robert, do you accept? Yeah. Do you accept? Yeah. No. No? I think purpose is... Really? 
it's bad or may, may I just speak yeah. as to the, to the yeah. reason yeah. for the for for including the word necessary? <laughs> Thanks. Uh, yes. What did you say? So the reason for including the word necessary is, is to say that this is the minimum. <coughs> where criminal statutes are necessary. So this presumes the libertarian position that the only valid exercise of a criminal statute would be for the protection of life, liberty, and property. So where a criminal statute is necessary, is, is required, we've decided that consistent with liberty, we have to protect life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and the pursuit of property, that, that this is setting the minimum threshold. If a criminal statute is necessary, that we've all agreed this criminal thing is bad, not that some criminal statutes are or are not valid exercises of this non-aggression, which I, I believe we all are in, in, in agreement about, that we should have fewer criminal statutes. This is just related to what we should do in response to what we have in Congress decided should be um, criminal statutes. So that's, that goes to the reason for the selection of necessary as opposed to where they exist or how they are because we don't want to condone the existence of them. We want to say if you gotta have it then we want to have this be our, our, our response to those criminal statutes. Thank you. Is anyone else uh, speaking in favor of the amendment? I believe that we still have an issue with the correct wording because as I read it now exists is essentially a given. Um, I would propose something slightly less accepting of an existence. Uh, we, the blue sky exists, water exists, water is wet, it exists as a wet substance, except when it's ice. Um, <laughs> criminal Doesn't statutes happen. are promoted as having, as being necessary for the protection of life, liberty, and property. These statutes are often promoted by someone with a specific end goal. The Gun Control Act of 68 was promoted to end a, a, a spree of violence, but it was penned with the intention of giving the southern states back Jim Crow authority over African Americans receiving firearms under the Civil Rights Act of 68. The necessary, the exists, and the actual promotion of is something that always runs through my head. So I would ask if the, the amendment, uh, the authors of the amendment would accept the word promoted ex in, in replacement of exist or other. Are promoted? This is are promoted. This is Robert's would the this wholesale is sold? <laughs> Robert? It's Robert. Robert. It's Robert's amendment. Robert, do you accept that for my amendment? Where? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 you know you're at a you mentioned would you 20 minutes. I'm going to once again propose another friendly amendment. <laughs> For clarity, uh, Currently, we have it so it's, it reads, uh, where criminal statutes are promoted for the protection of life, liberty, and property, etc. I'm going to move to strike the word where and simply say criminal statutes must only be for the protection of life, liberty, and property. And that's uh, it. I think that changes the Yeah, that's, that's not even order. Robert doesn't accept that. Okay. Call question. All right. Second. Second. Call the question. All in favor of uh, where criminal statutes are promoted? Uh, say aye. 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 And nay. 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 Yeah, I believe the nays have it. Thank you very much. And I just want to remind the body that we have approximately 13 minutes left uh, in the convention portion. Uh, we are under new business. Is there any further new business to take up? I have an amendment to the Constitution. Uh, Brian McQuaid has an amendment to the Constitution. Uh, there's two slips of paper on everyone's desk. Um, the first one is incorrectly titled Article 6, Section 4. It should be Article 4, Section 4. It's involving officers 
of the Libertarian Party. Um, I'd like to uh, amend that we add a section C that says if registered to vote shall not be registered with any other party. I don't believe everybody has a copy of that in front of them. There might be some extra, extra copies, copies on tables, so if there are extra copies, can you hold them up? Somebody need one? It should be the it should be the smaller one. Thank you. Does everybody have a copy now? Okay. Please continue. That was, that was it. The motion was to add section C, and, it, and, it, and again, it should be Article Four, not Six. Article Four, Section Four, all officers of the Libertarian Party of New Hampshire, uh, and adding Section C, if registered to vote, shall not be registered with any other party. Would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, yeah, basically, uh, the only thing I have to say on this is, if you're Libertarian, you're going to be a Libertarian in all the way. You can't be registered for the Democratic Party if, yeah, to run for office for the Libertarian Party. Yeah. Would anyone like to speak against the motion? Request for clarification. Yes. Request um, for clarification. So, if you are currently registered undeclared in compliance with this, and then to vote in a partisan primary, which requires changing your registration, would that kick you off the board? Uh, technically, the registration would only be changed if you do not stop at the table before exiting. But for the five minutes you're voting, you are a member of another party. It's true. So, I'm just curious for members of is the intent that this shall not apply on election day, essentially. Yeah, good point. Yeah. Uh, would the membership director uh, like to give clarification? Yeah. yeah. Essentially, the intent here is to uh, to make it clear that if, if you're going to hold an officer position, that you should only be registered as libertarian. So I, I would say to that that you should not be voting in another primary. Uh, with the exception of the Libertarian Party's primary. And if we do not have one. So I, I'm, not I'm, not trying, I'm not trying to, to, to be a jerk here. Just I, I, would I would accept a friendly amendment to, uh, to add in a section regarding uh, if, if a primary is held. Mm. So if we have party status. Well, so o only if we are, well, actually. No, if there's an election and there is no Libertarian running. Yeah. Well, the, part, the, primary, the primary is a blanket switching of your voter registration for the yeah. five or ten minutes. For the five minutes. Yeah. So I just, I just want to be clear, I don't want a member of the board to all of a sudden be ineligible to be an officer because they are currently undeclared and vote in the D or R primary because that's the only game in town. I mean, that's certainly not the intent of the amendment, I don't think. No. But, right. um, but if, I mean, frankly, I think that if an officer doesn't vote for the Libertarian and decides to change the registration and vote for an R or a D when there is a Libertarian available, that should be, you know, should, could be an issue of concern. Yeah. But, but this would also, but, this, yeah, yeah, this the is question is, just, more broad. Sorry, I just want to be clear, we're talking about, the only time you would do this would be, a, no, it's only on election day that you can right. walk in if you're undeclared, if you're, member, if you're registered as a member of a party, you can't switch. Correct. But if you're undeclared, you can walk in, pick the, the blue or the pink sheet or whatever they give you, pull the ballot, and then walk out and say, so technically on the registration list, you're never actually changed. Correct. But, but the, the you know, existential reality is you're, you become affiliated with another party. So I don't want to, I just, I just don't want a member, a member to be able to come to a board member and say, no, you can't be on the board. You voted in the Republican primary, so you voted in the Democrat primary. So I just wanted to just, I realize the intent, but I think the way it's worded, yeah. someone could have recourse to the, to the board or the judicial committee to kick someone off the board. Do you have a proposal for different wording? Um, I suppose you could just add one more sentence to say, um, this shall not apply to the temporary change of voter registration on election day. Is essentially what I think the the, board, the the proposer wants. I think that would pass muster. Yeah. Oh. I agree with that. Yeah. He agrees to the friendly amendment. Okay. Uh, so that, if I understand correctly, the proposal would be to add the section 4C: If registered to vote, shall not be registered with any other party, comma, with the exception of. 
uh, any slight modification, temporary modification on a primary election date. I said this shall not apply to undeclared voters yeah. voting in a partisan primary on election day. Yeah. Provided they switch back to either libertarian or undeclared. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Yeah, so that works. It can only be undeclared. Right. Shall not apply to undeclared voters temporarily changing their voter registration on a primary election day. Yeah. Provided they change on election day. Yeah. Stupid bullshit. <clears throat> Would anyone like to speak against the proposal? Max, you're recognized to speak against the proposal. Thank you, I'm rising to speak against the uh, motion. And uh, I have two reasons. Number one is any such wording where you become exempt because of how you're registered as a voter puts you at the mercy of changes to the election laws. When I was in the State House every single year we had and before I was elected. Every single year we had changes to the election laws. The Hampshire Municipal Association puts out a list, and it's this long. Every single year they change it and change it and change it and change it. And each party changes it to their, their own advantage. The second concern that I have is that it's, uh, it, it's very, very difficult to enforce. And uh, just because the rules right now are you can vote in another party's primary, I think what's happened in the past is most libertarians that, who I knew voted in the Republican Party's primary because we didn't have a primary. And they're used to, the libertarians around the state, they're used to voting in the Republican Party primary because it's an active primary and you have some liberty Republicans out there to support. So now all of a sudden, they're going to register as that. I've walked out of the, uh, of, of the uh, voting place and forgotten that I was registered as you know, who knows what, and who knows how many people are going to be, continue to be registered as a Democrat or Republican having voted in that party's primary. Now, admittedly, the Democrat party primary is not very active because the party bosses basically pick and appoint their, their party's nominees. But the Republican party, every single position on my ballot has four, five, six, sometimes as much as 10 names for Congress, for Senate, for Governor. You have a very active Republican primary, so you're going to have people coming out who are still registered as Republican just because they voted in that primary. Is there anyone who would like to speak in favor? Robert Lombardo, you were recognized. I'm sorry, I have a, I have, I have a, a request for clarification. Okay, request for clarification. Is, is the intent to have officers be registered libertarians? Because that seemed to be what Ryan spoke just No, before. only if registered to vote. Yeah, correct. If registered to vote, to be registered libertarian. So that would not, um, so if, if that is the intent, then I, I think this discussion is, is straying from the, from the intent of the motion and that the text would more accurately, uh, should, should more accurately read, uh, shall be registered as a libertarian. If possible. It's usually not possible. My, my interpretation of this, and my interpretation might be slightly different than uh, Mr. McClay's, is that it does not speak to people that are registered undeclared. Undeclared is not a party. Republican and Democrat are parties. Uh, it says, if registered to vote, and there's currently no requirement that one be registered to vote to be a member of the party or to be an officer of the party, so if you're registered to vote, you, if this were to be adopted, you shall not be registered with any other party. So it would allow for undeclared and those who are registered libertarian. That was my, my question. Yes. Is there anyone else to speak against? Uh, the question has been called. All in favor of the proposal with the sentence added, this shall not apply to undeclared voters changing registration temporarily on the election. You have to vote to yes. call the question. Uh, thank you. Uh, all in favor of calling the question. Aye. Aye. Opposed? The question has been called. The motion before us is on the amended proposal to add, uh, if registered to vote, shall not be registered with any other party and adding the sentence, this shall not apply to undeclared voters changing registration temporarily on election day. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. 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 
I heard a few nays. I don't think it was enough to overcome the three quarters required. So motion passes. Uh, it is now 457, 458. The business session is scheduled to end in two minutes. Uh, I don't believe we would have time to hear any further business. Point of information. Point of information. Can there be a motion to extend the hours and modify the agenda? Uh, there could be a motion. Uh, that motion would need to be a specific amount of time. Motion to extend by 20 minutes. Motion to extend by 20 minutes has been made. Uh, has that been seconded? It's been made and seconded. Uh, would you like to speak to the motion? Do we have to? I mean, let's you don't just, have to. Yeah, let's just vote upon it. I mean, I, I think that there's likely enough. Motion to extend the business portion by 20 minutes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. That sounds like it passed. Uh, so business has been extended till 520. Is there any new, further new business as it regards the Constitution or the bylaws? Mr. Chair, I submitted a packet of proposals uh, to the delegates. In the interest of time, I'd like to focus solely on proposals three and four amendments to the Constitution that would uh, require notification of future amendments to be proposed to future conventions be distributed to the delegates at least two weeks of advance. They're amending uh, Proposal 3 amends Article 11 and Proposal 4 amends Article 13 respectively, simply adding in the requirement that all proposals be submitted to the Executive Committee ahead of the convention and delivered to the delegates via newsletter at least two weeks prior to the convention. I can make a quick friendly amendment. I would like to extend that to 30 days. Um, in Arkansas, we have 90 days, um, and I think 30 days is plenty. I mean, I, I, I definitely think that the body should be aware of what they're going to be voting for before they get to convention, so I, I think we should extend it. So, Proposal 3 is on the table, and again, since it's not popped up on the screen, I will read it. Uh, the bylaws of the party may be amended by a majority vote of the delegates at any convention of the party, provided the proposed change were published in a newsletter prior to the convention. Uh, and where is 30 days being added in here? Uh, and also, uh, point of information uh, to the person making the motion, how do you define newsletter here? Justin? Justin, how do you define newsletter? Well, would that be something that must be mailed to all of the members, something posted on the website, something sent via email? I, I would define newsletter as something sent via email or by mail, uh, to be decided by the executive committee, and at least something that can be confirmed delivered to the delegates. If some delegates do not have an email, they would have to email the copy. They just say notify. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's sufficient. Um, Sean Majorski, you are recognized. Thank you. I would speak against just for the simple reason that I think that the party in convention should be able to adopt changes at the meeting regardless of what's been proposed ahead of time. Uh, this, this would not... That only amendments can be made if they've been notified. Uh, yeah, you are correct. It does appear that it would prohibit uh, the members from making proposals during convention unless those proposals were published in a newsletter 30 days prior to the convention. Uh, anyone like to speak in favor of Proposal 3? Just a point of information to the previous point. It can be any convention. I believe the bylaws provide for a calling of a convention at any point in time. So if you wanted to make proposals, you could just call a convention, notify people 30 days beforehand. So you're right, it does stop the body from being able to consider something at that moment in time. However, that's actually the intent of it. The idea is that the body shouldn't be voting on something that they've been presented with two hours beforehand. I mean, you think how complicated the platform was? How well informed do we think the body really was about it? Uh, 
I, I just want to point out that this would also uh, allow an executive committee to prevent the publication of things if you were putting it up to the executive committee to publish something. The you know body, and I'm not saying that this particular body would do that, but a body, and I've seen it happen in other states, could lose the email and it never gets published 30 days beforehand. Gilletta, you are recognized to speak. Um, I'd like to speak against this as the secretary, uh, knowing that we have many people who are on a do not email me list, do not mail me list, do not phone me list. This would disenfranchise those people from having the same opportunity as other members of the membership. Mr. Maxton, you are recognized. Uh, yeah, I'd like to make another friendly amendment here. I believe that the, in my opinion, the intent of this is to stop the executive committee from making amendments at the, you know, right before the convention. I don't think that the intent of this was to stop the membership. So I'd like to make an amendment to make this appeal apply to only the executive committee. Do you accept that? I accept. Does that make sense? How, how would this be reworded, please? Um, I, just very quickly, I may be able to answer that for you. Um, just to read it for clarification, the bylaws of the party may be amended by a majority vote um, I'm reading, by the way, Article, yeah, Ten of Bylaws, as amended. Um, yeah, Article 11, I'm sorry. Um, the bylaws of the party may be amended by a majority vote of the delegates at any convention of the party, provided the members of the executive committee um, are notified prior to the convention. Is that, would that, no? No. No, no I, no. I, yeah, I'm wrong. Um, sorry. The bylaws of the party may be amended by the executive committee. I don't know. No. no. Yeah, no. This, I think this is, can we recess for five minutes, come up with wording, or even a couple minutes? No. Do you accept as a friendly amendment, perhaps, notification being constituted, being published on the uh, LPNH website a month before him? Yeah. That's, no, I, I do reject, reject it. Yeah. I move to table the motion until we uh, come to an agreement on language. Move to table. Second. I believe a move to table requires only a simple majority. Yeah. Uh, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor of tabling say aye. 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 Opposed? The proposal has been tabled. Uh, Rich Tommaso would like to make a resolution. I'll go ahead and recognize you before we get into anything that might tie up the next 15 minutes. I actually have final wording for a resolution, um, but did want to um, at least make a recognition. Um, we, uh, we f I found out um, recently that uh, one of the founding members of the LPNH, uh, Mr. Howard Wilson, who some of you know, uh, passed away um, around Christmas time. Uh, some of your newer members, Howard hasn't been active for a while, and he moved um, out west, I believe. Texas. Texas. Um, and so Howard, uh, Howard and I do not always see eye to eye. Howard um, came into the political scene as a global anarchist um, and that slightly moderated his views uh, over time. Um, but uh, say what you want about Howard, um, he worked like a dog. Um, he was, he did probably more outreach booths than all of us combined. Um, he would go anywhere and work a table all day. Um, usually the world's smallest political quiz, handing out memberships, selling raffles, whatever we were doing, that was his thing. Uh, he collected thousands of petition signatures. Um, he ran for office as a libertarian. He was actually a libertarian office holder. Um, he was on his town budget committee and maybe another committee. Um, and, I mean, Howard was a hardcore libertarian and people were voting for him. Um, I, I talked with Howard about this once. He says, well, they knew I wouldn't lie to them. So I run their vote, even if they didn't agree with me. Um, so, so people do respect your integrity and your principles. Um, Howard did serve on the board um, several times, and uh, yeah, he was he was just he was at the state house. Um, I saw him up there um, just until even shortly before he moved away. Um, so 
So like I said, you may not even agree with Howard's methods or everything he was doing or how he dressed or any of that. Um, but believe me, if, if all of us worked as hard as he did, uh, we will we'll run this state in 10 years. Um, so I just like the, the, the entire convention to, to recognize Howard Wilson um, and to you know, wish his family um, well. I know this is trying time. And uh, just recognize he was also, he was Libertarian of the Year at least once, maybe twice, and we may have actually given him a Lifetime Achievement Award just for um, you know, decades and decades of activism. Um, so at least, like, at least a brief moment of silence to recognize Howard. Um, and for those of us who can remember him, to remember him. Thank you. Uh, is there further new business as it regards to bylaws, constitution, or does anyone have a resolution that they would like to make? Okay. Chair recognizes Roger back. So I think we have language. So looking at this, it would be proposal three and proposal four. This sentence will be added at the end of the first paragraph for both. Okay. Proposals by EC for bylaws or constitution if it's in proposal four. For bylaws amendments in convention must be emailed or mailed and printed at lpnh.org to all party members no later than 30 days prior to the convention <laughs> can you get that language to the secretary please <laughs> i guess <laughs> took a long time to come up with it come on <laughs> And I have a question about uh, where the commas are. <laughs> there are no commas. And that, that's a legitimate question because I, I don't know how many people saw the, uh, the article out of Maine to where there was a lawsuit because the statute did not have the Oxford comma and people sued because they were not being paid overtime. You repeat that? Can you repeat that? Sorry, I didn't hear you. That there was a lawsuit about overtime because the statute did not have the Oxford comma. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the reasoning for which is that it defined whether a person was a packer or a transport driver. And the Oxford comma lacking um, essentially meant that a person that's a transport driver receives overtime, which the legislature may or may not have intended. Is there anyone who would like to speak in favor of the motion that is currently being typed and will momentarily be on the screen? Yes, I think that it provides a simple um, notice function and doesn't remove anybody's ability to propose amendments on the convention board. Anyone to speak against the proposal? The question has been called. I will wait until the wording is on the screen before we vote. I have a point of information in the meantime. Point of information. Um, the auction is scheduled to close at 5.30. If we don't close business until 5.20, can we extend the time for the silent auction to give people a chance to uh, do that? Maybe extend to 15 uh, to 6. The silent auction is not on the agenda, so yes, we can informally extend that. Also, don't forget the 50-50 raffle. The uh, raffle pot currently is $53. I have another uh, point of inquiry. Point of, point of inquiry. Um, Robert Lombardo showed up after his nomination for membership. He, uh, he, he did approved. Accept. Yes, he accepted. Point of information. Point of information. Uh, I want to first congratulate the interesting guys on a wonderful convention. I would really <laughs> thank you. Really good. And uh, in that vein, uh, I would like to offer to buy everybody here a beer. So when you go out and get your order beer, uh, your first beer, just tell them to put it on Dan's tab. Nice. Yes, they have to put it in the
and it would be nice if it were ready for me as soon as we end this. Ordered or domestic? The wording uh, of the proposal, uh, this would be to amend proposal three and proposal four in the handout that you received to add the following sentence. Proposals by the EC for bylaws amendments in convention must be mailed or emailed to the members and published at lpnh.org no later than 30 days prior to the convention. Uh, I would make a friendly amendment that EC be spelled out to Sorry, that was me. executive committee that was the intent. and no, that lpnh.org be amended to the website. The party website. Because the website could change from lpnh.org. LPNH.awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and again, LPNH. the, the uh, proposal for proposal four would read constitution instead of bylaws. Uh, I, I would entertain a motion to divide this simply because uh, there are different thresholds for adopting. Second. Yeah. Second for the division. All in favor of adopting Proposal 3 as amended on the uh, screen, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. It passes. Uh, all in favor of adopting Proposal 4 to amend the Constitution to read as it now says on the screen. Uh, Again, this is Proposal 4. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. It passes. The time is 5.14 p.m. The motion to extend extended until 5.20. Is there further new business? Rich Tommaso, you were recognized. Yes, uh, I have an, <clears throat> an amendment to the platform as adopted. Amendment to the platform. All right, this is a grammatical fix. Uh, section 354 foreign policy <laughs> final sentence of the first paragraph the word over should be changed to more than page four of the handout hey, page four which blank uh, foreign policy 3.4 so that the wording should read instead of reading in over 130 nations it should read in more than 130 right. nations yeah and I couldn't find any instances of over but um, at least that one we can first. Call the question. Yep. It's been moved. Seconded. Question has been called. All in favor of calling the question? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All in favor of amending Plank 3.4 of the platform as amended and adopted earlier, changing the word over to more than, say aye. 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 All opposed? It passes. We have four more minutes in the scheduled business. Is there a further new business? Mr. Chair, I'd make a motion that all further business be tabled pending the executive committee to schedule a special convention for business purposes only to be held within 180 days to discuss any further uh, amendments or issues that pertain to party business. Second. So there's been a motion and it's been seconded that all further party business be tabled. Uh, the only party business that is currently open is new business, so there's nothing necessary, necessarily being tabled. Uh, but the proposal, as I understand it, would require the executive committee to schedule a business convention within 180 days. Yes, Mr. Chair. Would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, Mr. Chair, I believe that there is still a lot of unanswered debate on several planks of the platform, um, as well as other potential amendments um, that members of the party might want to bring forward, as well as additional changes the executive committee want, might want to bring forward to bring the bylaws and the Constitution more into line with the attempts to grow the party significantly. Uh, the small organization it is, I believe, 100, within 180 days, within six months, the members would be delighted to hear another report on interim membership growth 
from Mr. McQuaid, as well as party activities going into the 2018 election year prior to the start of 2018. Would anyone like to speak against the motion? Mr. Paxton, you are recognized. I understand the intent of this, but conventions are extremely expensive to put on. And they're trying to do two of them, and they're very difficult to put on. Trying to do two of these a year with the limited you know, abilities that we have is extremely difficult. Uh, to speak to his um, mentioning the membership reports, those are posted every month on lpnh.org. Um, from our from our executive committee meetings, so we have the treasury report, the membership report, um, from our bylaw from our executive committee meetings online every month. Um, I've, I'm not opposed to gathering together again. My opposition is the expense and the the time and the effort it takes to put one on. John, you are recognized. Uh, speaking in favor of the motion, uh, since. Uh, when we lost party status, we allowed our convention to flow, which is fine. But now that we have party status, we're required by law to have a convention so in a September time frame, so we must comply with that. No. So being a business convention would be less costly than a full-blown convention. Uh, that is incorrect. There is an opt-out to where a political party does not have to abide by the state-mandated uh, time for convention. Uh, Ian Freeman, you are recognized. Uh, yeah, I want to speak against this. Uh, once a year is enough for bylaw stuff. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Would anyone like to speak in favor of the motion? Yep. Anyone liking to speak against will be the final speaker, and then we will vote. Uh, as to the intent of the motion to meet and continue to grow the party, I feel that that's appropriate, but I, I don't think that the way to do that is through another convention addressing bylaws and constitutional things. I think that uh, addressing strategy and election and policy is, is, is fine, and having adopted a platform, I think we should stick with that until the next convention, and we should address any concerns to our strategy outside of that process. So the motion on the table is to have the executive committee schedule a business convention within 180 days. All in favor say aye. Opposed say nay. Nay. The motion is defeated. It is 520. I will set or entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion to Second. adjourn. Second. Point, of Second. Point, Point of information. Before adjournment, Mr. Chair, is taxation theft. Taxation <laughs> is theft. <laughs> <laughs> Any objection to adjourning from the business? Hearing none, we are adjourned. Uh, reminder that the beautiful young lady standing at that microphone is selling 50-50 raffle tickets. We do, and right now there's $106, so you're going to get about $53, and you can't win if you don't play. The other thing I'm going to say is you guys should all buy a Libertarian t-shirt if you don't have one, because I can tell you when I wore my Johnson Wall t-shirt during the campaign going super, like, food shopping at the supermarket, tons of positive feedback. So. People notice that stuff, so if you buy a t-shirt and you want to represent the party, you want to you know, grow the party, buy a t-shirt, wear it when you go food shopping, because everybody looks. <laughs> All right? And don't forget, the silent auction is going on. Uh, we had planned to close that at 5.30. Uh, Gilletta might be a few minutes later getting over there, but don't expect her to wait too terribly long bid on things and remember you can only give the Libertarian Party of New Hampshire up to $1,000 per calendar year per person. Hey Daryl, do you have to be present to win the silent auction or the you raffle? You do not have to be present to win either the silent auction or the raffle. However, if you do not put your name on the raffle ticket, then we will not know who you are. <laughs> and if you are present, it makes us, uh, it gives us a lot less work having to try to track you down to get money for silent auction items. We'd like to invite you to visit Freekeen.com. Freekeen.com features audio, video, and blogs chronicling the transition to a voluntary society. Freekeen.com also has comments and discussion forums so you can be heard. Freekeen.com. I should be in Keene, New Hampshire with the Free Staters.